take a shot. Take a shot. So that's about the medial border of the facet on one side. Take a shot. Take a shot. Take a shot. So that's about the lateral border. And so what I've done is marked the patient accordingly. And um, to get an idea of where my incision is, I can either place an instrument just out to get an, kind of an up-down view of the trajectory and the facade. I'm just taking an instrument outside the patient's neck and taking a shot. Go ahead. So you can see I can get to that facet pretty well. And I have, have an idea in terms of up-down where to make my incision. And generally, the incision is just off midline, two to three levels below the intended segment. And the way I do this is I incise skin, I incise the ligamentum nuce and reflect the muscles laterally, the same kind as you would do with a standard open incision. And then I can just, to check, no need to do this necessarily, take a shot on a lateral. So Bruce, are you making a midline incision then? I know, you know, I usually make two small incisions right off midline. I just don't find it really, whether you make two incisions or three, if you're not stripping the muscles and tissues off the dorsal spine, the patient still goes home, you know, that day or the next day. But my question is, do you have, you have five lines there? One's midline, the other one's the medial border of the, of the lateral that. mass, and the other one's the lateral? Is yeah. that correct? Okay. Yeah, a midline, uh, and then medium border, the medium lateral border of the facet. So you're just making an incision just, just lateral of mid, mid sagittal, correct? Yeah, okay. bet between the spinous process and the um, medial facet border. And the reason for that, it gives you kind of a slightly medial to lateral trajectory, so you're always aiming away from the canal. Make sense? Yes, thanks. So then the instrument is inserted through the incision. And you always advance on an AP. Take a shot. Take a shot. A lateral. May have to make the incision slightly higher up. AP. AP, lateral, so I can go a little higher up, AP, AP. So what I'm going to do is I want to come down on bone. I want to be on bone over the lateral mass. Lateral. So that's about, what level am I, two, three, four, about five, six. Take a shot. Mallet. So once it goes in, take a shot. I'm a little medial there, and so instead of pulling it out, I just kind of shim it over. It'll move in the joint. Take a shot. It could be. I'm going to try to come a little. Take a shot. I'll try to come a little more lateral. Take a shot. It's probably acceptable. Take a shot. Take a shot, a, uh, AP. You can see how this acts as a spatula. And I don't have a perfect trajectory in the facet, but you see the, the metal front end of that thing is pliable enough. It'll follow the facet border, which is generally pretty stiff. And um, once that's in position, that's your post. Uh, you can't advance it any further because it's hitting the pedicle, and it's kind of confined by the boundaries of the facet. And this instrument is a um, trephin decorticator, or I call it a rat tooth decorticator. It's hollow. It fits over that post and allows you to decorticate the lateral mass. And so this is put in over the joint. I can feel myself on the bone. I can feel it decorticating. I do the top and the bottom. Give me a lateral. So I backed out a little bit. I'm just going to tap myself in. Take a shot, come up to decorticate the top, take a shot in the bottom. 
So on top of actually doing an inter facet fusion in the joint itself, you're also decorticating the, the dorsal aspect of the lateral mass, correct? Yeah, I mean, that's important. I mean, that's, 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 the, that's the main entree is the posterior fusion. So sometimes when you're working that, you can pull out a little bit. Let's just take a check an AP and a lateral. Looks okay. Now, this is the working channel. This is a guide tube that inserts over that and maintains distraction of the facet joint. I'll have my assistant hold this. Take a, um, hands away, take a lateral. So it's backed out a little bit. A lateral, AP. Yep. So once that's in, I take out the initial facet access tool. Give me an AP and a lateral. Good. I, I, I could have a little better trajectory or higher up, but I'm in the facet. Uh, take an AP. And then through that tool, I place various rasps and decorticators to remove the cartilage. So here, in this case, I'm just removing the cartilage out of the joint. And typically, I take about uh, you know five or six passes. We have a rotatory decorticator, which is a little more aggressive. I can do five or six passes with that. And this is a uh, rotatory decorticator. It's a little more aggressive if you don't feel you're getting enough. Ch check an AP, lateral, back down a little bit, which is easily correctable. I just tap myself back in. And then the rotatory decorticator goes into the joint. And you can see off of this that I'm getting a lot of bone bits and shards, and I've got good decor decortication of the facet cartilage. The implant uh, is uh, a titanium cage. It's acid etched, um, and it comes with supplemental screw fixation. It's directional, and it has an arrow pointing up to the head, which is fairly straightforward. And so uh, this is inserted into the joint. And the important point here is when you're putting this in, you want to make sure that you're not backing out. So you hold firmly on one hand. Because it, it, once it goes in, it's, it's pretty solid. Uh, AP, lateral, could go in maybe a little more. But that's pretty solid. When you put this in, I can, you can pull a cadaver up, you can pull someone up. It probably has over 50 pounds of pullout resistance. It's very, very stuck. Bruce, is there any chance that you could actually um, experience a pedicle fracture if you're too aggressive? Uh, you know, I suppose so. Um, uh, I haven't seen that or heard of that, but, you know, it's like anything else. It, there's some skill to it. I mean, it's not real hard malleting. We're not in the lumbar spine, so it requires some discretion. I haven't heard of that particular complication, but, you know, surgery, anything can happen. So so if you're medial, then you're going to hit the pedicle, but if you're, if you're la more lateral in the lateral half of the of the lateral mass, presumably you can go anterior then, couldn't you? No, the only level you can do that on is at 6, 7, and 7, 1. So you have to be a little careful with your depth because the pedicle comes medial. At C3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, you're always going to run into the pedicle no matter how lateral. Great. So this is the supplemental screw fixation. As I said, it adds substantially to pullout resistance and is integral to it. And the technique here is a little downward pressure with the hand. And you, before you put this in, you want to make doubly sure, because once it's in, it's a bear to get out. So I would check a lateral and an AP. Um, and uh, I think that's a satisfactory position. So it's a little downward pressure, which helps deflect the screw up. And uh, the screw uh, is deflected by the cage. It's actually stuck to the cage, so you can never get a loose screw. And this breaks off. You could hear that click. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, and then the final step, check an AP and a lateral. 
perfect. And then uh, what I do here is put the bone graft in over the lateral mass. So we don't really have anything here, but we'll just fake it. We put the bone graft in. We have a little pusher, and this impacts the bone graft uh, over the lateral mass decortication. So Bruce, I've done a, I've done a handful of these cases, but I've never seen a cage back out, and I've never used that screw. What, yeah. what, what's the, what, have you ever seen a cage back out before? Yes. Um, we have one case. There was a patient with Erlos Danlos who went to Europe and had a prosthetic disc. I'm not sure what kind. It was put in Richmond, Virginia, and the, I, I don't think the patient was a very good candidate for it. They were very mobile, and uh, that's the only instance I know of the cage backing out. There's a few cases of pseudoarthrosis that's going to happen, but the cage remained in the joint. And do you see any role for doing a, um, a laminoforaminotomy in conjunction with this at all? Well, you know, with this approach, your incision is two to three levels below. It's possible to do it, but it's tricky with the incisions. I think, you know, when I first did this, and the, we did the initial cl clinical trial in Asia, and when I did it here, I was always worried. So I did a foramenotomy and then did the procedure and rechecked the foramenotomy. But after a few times of doing that, I started to trust that I was getting an indirect decompression, and I don't try to do the two together. If, if you were to kind of um, think about how this would do, just, just indirect decompression from Detrax alone versus a laminal foraminotomy head-to-head, -head, randomized control trial, how, how do you think it would perform? Well, I think if the patient has radicular pain and some slight we and weakness and numbness, it would do just as well. If you're talking about someone with a neurologic deficit, I think you ought to have a direct decompression. Um, I, I think it's safer. I think you're less likely to get a root palsy. And in your average surgeon's hands, maybe not some of the surgeons here, but in your average surgeon's hands, I would say this is safer. Um, you know, a, in my experience, the people doing foramenotomies do quite a number of them. They're excellent at them, and they have a very low complication rate. But for your average guy in the community, who's doing one every, I don't know, one every few months or six months, not so good. This, in their hands, is safer.